Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I will continue talking about series and sequences. In this particular lecture, I will present um, uh, something, some information pertained to a series um, of progressions, arithmetic progression and geometric progression. Now, um, it's actually the most simple uh, the most simple cases, actually, of summation, uh, arithmetic or geometric progression. Um, but at the same time, they are um, actually occurring quite often, and that's why we started. This is the simple and very often occurring uh, examples of series. So, without further ado, let's just um, let's just introduce these two things. So, first of all, about arithmetic progression. Arithmetic progression is characterized by the first element, A, and the difference between two consecutive elements, which means that after the first element, A, next one would be A plus D, next one would be A plus 2D, etc. And what is my element number K? It's A plus K minus 1D. This is my generalized uh, case element of arithmetic progression with the first uh, element A and the difference G. Well, indeed, if K is equal to 1, this is 0, so it's A. If K is equal to 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's A plus D. If K equals to 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, so it's A plus 2G, etc. Now, let's sum them up together. Before doing that, I will remind you a case with uh, uh, famous uh, German mathematician uh, Gauss, or Haus, and uh, when he was a child, uh, I think I actually told you before this story, when he was a child, he was asked to, well, the whole class actually where, where he participated, was asked to basically sum up all the numbers from 1 to 100. And he was very quick with an answer. And what he did was, instead of doing this, he did this. He wrote exactly the same thing, but backwards. 100, 99, 98, 3, 2, 1. This is the same sum, right? Which means if I will add them together, it will be double the sum which we uh, which we need. But considering that um, I can sum up these all numbers in any sequence, because uh, addition is uh, commutative and associative, so we will sum up sum up these two sequences uh, vertically. This, and then this, and then this and then this, and this, and this, and as you see, in every case, I have 101. Now, how many times I have 101? 1, 2, 3, 4, 100. So, my total, which is double sum, is 100 times 101. Which is this. But this is the double of the sum. So a single sum is 5050. That's his answer, which he came up with very quickly. I will do exactly the same thing for arithmetic progression in a more generalized case. Let's say I have to sum up all the members of arithmetic progression with numbers from 1 to some maximum number n. So my first member is a, my second member is a plus d, my third one is a plus 2d, etc. Now my last number, number n, would be a plus n minus 1d. Now the one preceding this would be 
one d less than this, right? We're going backwards, so it's n minus two d, all right? So these are the beginning and the end of the sequence which I have to summarize. This is s. So I'll put plus signs here. Okay? Now, I will do exactly the same thing as Gauss did uh, for summation of first hundred numbers. I'll put them in reverse. So, first I will put this one, a plus n minus 1 d. Secondly, I'll put this one, the previous one, a plus n minus 2 d, etc. And the last one would be A, and the one before that would be A plus Z, right? And now I have to sum them up together. And let's do it vertically again. The first one and the first one from the opposite side. The second one and the second one. Now, etc., etc. The last one with the first, and the one for less with the second. And now I will, obviously this is also S, so instead of summing sequentially, I will sum up vertically, and every pair, A plus this, what will be? Would be A and A, would be 2A plus N minus 1 D. Now, what will be here? A and A will be also 2A. N minus 2D and D would be again N minus 1D. Same thing. And as you guessed, everything else would be also A. I mean, two, um, it's this way. Would be 2A plus N minus 1D. And how many of these I have? Well, obviously, number n of the elements which I'm summing up. So basically what I came up with here is that the sum can be calculated as n times a plus n minus, sorry, 2a. It's 2a plus n minus 1d. And obviously, the formula for a sum S would be n to a plus, sorry, n minus 1 d divided by 2. So this is a generalized formula for sum of the first n um, elements of arithmetic progression with the first um, member A and the difference D. Well, can it be simplified somehow? Yeah, I guess it can, but I don't think it matters. You can rewrite this as, you can divide this by 2, so it will be A times N plus N, N minus 1, D divided by 2. Doesn't really matter. I mean, whatever, whatever way you write it, uh, you will get exactly the same result. And this is, let me just use the summation in this case. Mm -hmm. My generalized element is a plus i minus 1 d. So I'm summing up this with i is equal from 1 to n. 
So sum of all elements which look like this, where pi is an index changing from 1 to n, is equal to this formula. Now, is it really a rigorous proof? Well, not exactly, because I was dealing with, well, basically some kind of a number, and I reversed the sequence. I think more rigorous proof would be just to do more or less the same thing by induction. And let me just, for an illustration, basically, do this again using uh, the method of mathematical induction. So let me rewrite this formula again as this divided by 2. And this is Sn. I use the index n to signify that this is the sum of the first n um, elements of my sequence. So how the classical method of induction is supposed to be used? First, you check it for some initial value. Let's say n is equal to 1. Now, if n is equal to 1, my sequence contains only one element, a. And obviously, the sum of this one element, a, is exactly the same thing, a. So I should have s1 equal to a. Now let's check it out. If n is equal to 1, this is 0, right? And this is 1, so I have 2a divided by 2, so it's a. Fine. So formula is correct for n equals to 1. Now, let's assume that for some n equals to k, as k is indeed equal to n times 2a plus n minus 1, uh, I mean k. I'm using k here now. And this is also k. D divided by 2. Now, what happens if I will change to k plus 1? Now, what happens with my, um, with my sum? Obviously, sum will increase by k plus first uh, member of the sequence, right? So, sk plus first is supposed to be equal to sk plus k plus first sequence. Now, k plus first sequence would be what? Uh, remember, my generalized formula is this one, right? This is k's member. Now, if instead of k, it's k plus 1, it would be a plus kd. Now, this is how it's supposed to be, right? So let's check that if I will do this, I will have a similar formula to this one with n equals to k plus 1. All right, so how can we check that? Very simply. So I have to add k times 2a plus k minus 1d divided by 2. That's my sk plus a plus kd. Well, obviously, we will use the common denominator. So I will have, so this is S k plus first. So I will have k times 2a plus k minus 1d plus 2a plus 2kd divided by 2, right? Okay, um, equals, instead of k times 2a plus 2a, k times 2a plus 2a plus k times k minus 1d plus 2kd. 
Okay? I have rewritten it in this way. I multiply k by 2a separately. Then this member, because I will combine them together in the future, and k is multiplied by this and then this. So, what do I have? Okay, k times 2a and 2a would be, obviously, k plus 1, 2a, right? Plus. Here, if I will factor out k, I will get k minus 1d plus 2d. That's what I have. equals k plus 1 to a plus k k minus 1 times d and 2d it's k plus 1d right divided by 2 equals now I can factor out k plus 1 and inside the parentheses I will have plus k d divided by two. Now, this is my final formula for s k plus k plus first member of this sequence. Now, if you will substitute instead of n k plus one, you will get exactly the same. You see, n minus one, well, where k is equal to uh, when n is equal to k plus one would be exactly k. So my formula is exactly the same, but with n equals to k plus 1 instead of n equals k. That's the real proof. Now, what's wrong with this proof? Well, nothing wrong, except that I kind of knew the formula, right? And now, knowing the formula, I can prove it by induction. But in the beginning, I didn't know the formula. I basically derived it using not exactly rigorous methodology of reversing the sequence and summing it uh, vertically. But whatever it is, I should probably say that the combination of both have intuitive proof, which is the first part, and the rigorous proof by induction, which is the second part, together they made the whole theory, well, relatively rigorous. All right? Okay, this is all for arithmetic progression. Now let me address the geometric progression. Some of the first n members of geometric progression. Now, what is geometric progression? If you remember, it's characterized by the first member and the quotient, which is multiplied on every step. And the element number k would be this. So my question is, what is sk equal to a plus aq plus blah blah plus aq k minus 1? What is this sum? That's what I have to calculate. Well, I'll do exactly the same thing. I'll do first some kind of a trick which help me, which would help me to derive the formula. Now, what's the trick? The trick is very simple. I, mul I, I multiply by q this sum. So q times sk is equal to a times q is aq. a times q is aq squared. aq uh, to the k uh, uh, to the k minus one times q would be a q to the k's, k's degree. And what is the previous member? Obviously, a q to the k minus 1. So my, uh, my power is from 0 to k minus 1 in this case, but from this case, it's from 1 to k. 
Now, these two expressions are very much alike because as you see this and this and everything in between are common with these guys, you see? So if I will do sk minus q times sk, what happens? If I subtract from this, I subtract this. Well, these guys will go, obviously. And what I will have is a minus a q to the k's degree. This is the only thing remaining from this. And this one, with a minus sign, because I'm subtracting, is what, re what remains from the second uh, from the second expression. And obviously from here I conclude oh, that's minus minus q is equal to a minus a q to the case from which s k is equal to a a minus q to the case degree one minus q. Right? I factor out a, so I have 1 minus qk, and I divided both sides by 1 minus q, I get this one. So this is the formula. Now, if I really want to do it very, very rigorously, I have to more or less repeat my uh, logic, which I did with arithmetic progression, summing up arithmetic progression. Uh, I have to repeat here and prove it by induction. Well, I leave it as an exercise to you because it's an extremely simple thing. Uh, so you can consider this as a final formula. What's also interesting here is another formula which you can actually uh, which you can actually derive derive from this one. A one minus Q K divided by one minus Q. Now the interesting formula which I wanted actually you to remember it's more or less in line with you remember the formula A minus B times A plus B is equal to A square minus B square. It's some kind of a you know very fast kind of a formula which you probably remember. Now this is not as short, but it's also a very useful formula. Uh, why don't you put a is equal to 1 in both cases? Now, this formula is true for any a and any q, more or less, right? So let's assign a equals to 1. So what happens? Well, 1 minus q to the k is equal to 1 minus q. 1 plus q plus etc plus q to the k minus 1. So, if you have an expression like this, you can always represent it as a, uh, the result of multiplication of these two expressions, which means that basically 1 minus 1 half to the fifth degree is equal to 1 minus 1 minus 1 half times 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half square plus 1 half cube plus 1 half to the fourth degree. So this is an interesting formula which you can uh, which you can actually use for certain uh, problems in a completely different area, like solving equations or anything like that. It allows you, basically, if you want to solve equation like this, you immediately see that the uh, q is equal to 1 is your uh, first root of this equation, uh, and, and then er every, everything else is by one factor less. So, for instance, you would like to solve an equation 1 minus x cubed is equal to 0. Well, I mean, yes, you can use some other methodology, but this is immediately, like x is equal to 1 is 1, um, root of this uh, particular equation, 1 solution, and 1 plus x plus x squared equals to 0 is another equation which you have to solve, and whatever 
the solutions of these plus x equals to 1 are the solutions of the whole thing. All right. Well, that's it for uh, geometric progression. Uh, I will talk about certain problems related to arithmetic and geometric progressions uh, in a separate lecture, including I will prove that, let's say, sum of arithmetic progression, uh, which uh, contains odd numbers, uh, is a square of the last number, and I will talk about paradox uh, offered by Greek, uh, Greek philosopher Zeno about Achilles and, and the tortoise. Um, but so far, this is an introduction to uh, what is exactly a uh, seri arithmetic series and, and geometric series. I offered intuitive formulas, uh, which I have derived with not exactly in a rigorous manner, but then you can prove both uh, arithmetic series and geometric series formulas using mathematical induction, which I did for arithmetic case, and I do recommend you to use the same approach and prove by induction the uh, formula for um, uh, geometric series. That's it for today. Don't forget that registered to unizor.com student can take exams, which is very, very important for, for your education, and uh, parents or supervisors, uh, please also um, Pay attention to this. You can uh, enroll your students into this or that course. You can check how they took exams and basically uh, make a decision about whether the course is completed or not. And if not, let them just repeat it. It's all free anyway. All right. Thanks very much.